fear itself is the story of what happens when you give in to your fears and let your imagination consume you and worry you into oblivion. I thought I would just um, make a rundown of the things I do when I make a movie, just in case anybody's interested, because my previous behind the scenes movies have all been pretty, um, you know, tongue in cheek. <laughs> How's about a little change, you know? So my favorite part of the filmmaking process is generally just brainstorming a movie, thinking out different things I like from other horror movies, especially for these Hamley pictures. If anybody doesn't know, my Hamley movie universe, as I call it, is a set of horror movies in the fictional town of Hamley, where the children of Nosferatu are an evil cult who are doing bad things, and things will progress within with each movie, but they are a set of individually contained horror movies. What I generally do when I brainstorm a movie is I think about the way I could further the plot of the Hamley world at the moment, but also tell something which is separate and you could watch alone without having to need, need the others. What's interesting about Fear itself though is whereas the others pretty much came fully formed, I went for a whole other draft with Fear itself because I originally looked for inspiration from noir movies. Um, I wanted this to be a throwback to 1940s noir movies. For those who don't know, my family movies are tributes to different types of horror movies throughout the decade. For instance, Hamley Disappearances is a found footage movie, and Revival of Dracula is an old school black and white throwback. Fear itself originally took inspiration from Hellraiser Inferno. I know it's an odd choice because like, it's one of those director video Hellraiser movies that nobody likes, but I think it had a really good idea if it wasn't a Hellraiser movie. I don't think it's very good, but that's besides the point. I wanted to make, and I kind of still do want to make, a horror noir movie. Luke wouldn't have been anxiety ridden, he would have been an actual detective who goes to Hamley after a mysterious email from Fred Rolfe, who was my character from the Hamley Disappearances, the one holding the camera, and he would have tried to interview ex-cult members who slowly go missing after they talk to him, um, until he comes across Colin Faust and or Dracula. Of course, he doesn't know it's Dracula, who needs um, his wife to look after him, who would have been Marianne from the previous movie, and she would have acted as a femme fatale for the whole noir side of it. However, I feel like that version of the script just didn't really have much direction to it. It would have ended up with him writing up the story, um, and him realizing through hints that Dracula has told him that he is feeding a fiction demon like a demon that feeds on stories, and so by him writing that story, he would have unleashed that creature and it would have killed him. It's a bit, it's it's too big of a build up for such a small reward. And I feel like this version of the movie is a lot more centered and you can focus on his relationship with Colin Faust and how he grows to attach to him and how his anxieties get the better of him. Because that's the thing, in the old draft, it wasn't about anxiety. And anxiety is something like, I feel I know pretty well. It's the first time I put like a real thing for me into my art. And I feel, personally, it makes Luke a lot more three-dimensional and you can relate to him a lot better. And it makes sense to me a lot more why the box would feed on that. So, in my process, I like to brainstorm a lot, write down a lot of notes of different like ideas and tropes that I would like to put into my, my own movie, until I finally come up with a story that I feel has a good one, two, three punch of three acts, you know? I may even write an outline, um, which is basically just like, just a thousand treatments basically until I feel comfortable enough to write a script, which is one of my most enjoyable parts. I really just love pre-production, if I'm gonna be honest. And once I've got the script hammered down, I like to send it off to a few friends. We, we look at the script together, then I've got the script as, as good as I can get, and that's when I start to storyboard it. I break down parts of the script and line them 1A, 1B, etc. And from here I develop pretty simplistic storyboards, just enough to provide like a, a guide for my camera operator, which is usually G, to use um, so she knows what she's getting um, on the shooting days. 
unless um, she has a better idea, in which case I leave it up to her. A big part about Fear Itself is the new prop we have. This is the first time I've had a major kind of prop built for my movie. The box. The cursed box that he puts in his worries. This was just a simplistic um, felt box which contained a model from Dragon Ball Z and I just covered it in card and design on the side of it you get Norse runes which provide like a secret hidden message of beware in a fiction demon inside if you're an easter egg hunter for that. I wanted the harshness of just plain white and black because I didn't know at the time whether this would be a black and white movie because obviously the noir, the noir angle, black and white, high contrast, your eye is drawn to it. The symbol of, that Baphomet is often making in a lot of pictures for the uh, opening of the box so you can distinguish which side opens along with um, two symbols um, from ancient Africa which um, come from the word story because obviously there's a demon inside which feeds on imagination and story. Casting for itself was pretty easy because there are only two major roles and the rest could be played by anybody who are, who are under the mask. Obviously I would have to return as Colin Faust because that's my character from Secret of Faust. Um, but for Luke, the search was actually a little bit more full out. I was considering Jordan who has appeared in all of my previous Hamley movies as different characters, but I, I wanted a fresh face, someone who hasn't been in these movies before, and I only cast my friends, so I figured it was time for um, Luke to play Luke. I feel he would he really per portrayed um, the breakdown scene very well. I had originally wrote Fear Itself back in the summer of 2016, however I was unable to actually get around to actually making it until the following um, spring. Uh, this because I my student discount ran out on uh, the editing software and I felt um, disillusioned to actually make it. So the production of Fear Itself has actually lasted a lot longer than the movie should really have in general. The production has lasted 10 months, however the actual filming has only lasted 4 months. Fear Itself took a lot longer to make than uh, originally planned. Uh, as such, I've actually made um, several different um, shot lists to make reshoots which are generally used to help patch things together a little bit more seamlessly. Because of how much the crew was generally busy a lot of the time, I had to resort to um, using stock footage, which is something I've always anticipated. Um, however, I don't think I've actually done a good job of it until now. And thank God for Final Cut Pro, I feel so blessed to be in a time period where um, digital editing and color manipulation and such can save the day on a movie because some of these shots are not mine in the slightest and some that you would have thought would be mine aren't mine in the slightest but with the right colors and everything especially for a movie like this where the anxiety can just like create really awful images um, and dreamlike atmospheres the sound design in mix with the visuals, especially this really creepy stock footage, has actually kind of come together really well and I'm really happy with it. But the very fact I got Fear Itself done, and I'm a quitter, I think the very fact I got Fear Itself done is just, just working at it slowly, slowly throughout all the months. You can do this. You can, you can do this. Anybody can make my movies. It got to the point where I thought, my birthday's coming up, I need to get and actually get this thing finished. Um, and I had three, three days for my birthday, and I still hadn't um, got a prop to use t for me dead, because my character dies, of course. So what we did, I basically made a quick Photoshop and then disguised it with lighting. I mean, you could still tell it's a, just a photo, but I felt it's very effective for the scene of the moment, especially with the red light, it just crumbles down, you don't really see it that well. But the very fact I got the movie done in three days, when I felt I still needed at least like 10% of it done, is astonishing, and I believe anybody could do that. Even if it's a long break between when you last worked on it and, and when you get to it now, I think you can make any movie. And that's what I kind of want to get across with this video. This is just what I do. Frankly, you're probably going to be better at it than me, because I'm pretty shit. But I just want to bring a little piece of inspiration to you, and I hope you've had some kind of enjoyment out of this.